Hi, my name's Peter, and I host this channel, Stacks and Facts, where I talk about library and information science in a way that I hope is accessible to as many people as possible. Now, if you're watching this video today, it's probably because you just started or will be soon starting your own path down library school, and this is something I have some experience with, so I wanted to put out some advice, as it were, uh, to you and to others, so that your experience will be as painless and as useful as possible. So let's just jump into it. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's do this. So the first thing I want to make explicit is that you belong here. Now there's this thing out there called imposter syndrome that everyone who goes to library school and more broadly everyone who goes to grad school I think feels at some point uh, this idea that somehow they fooled someone or they lucked out or whatever and now they're in over their heads because they're in grad school. And I just want to tell you, I want to nip that in the bud uh, and tell you that you are here because you put in the work to get here. So congratulations. That's a super big thing. Not everyone does. And the fact that you did means something. Uh, and I hope that you take that seriously. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's talk about grades. Uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. They don't matter. They don't matter at all. Like, as long as you're passing your classes, and let's be honest, if you're in grad school, you're going to be passing your classes, your grades don't matter, and this doesn't mean that you should be slacking. In fact, quite the opposite, you should be challenging yourself by taking on projects that might seem more than you can bite off originally. And the reason is because if you're going to fail, now's the time to do it. Um, that's one of the great things, I think, about uh, doing a master's and being in the university environment is this is your chance to try new things that you haven't done before um, and to really push yourself and see what your limits are. Without having to worry about what your grades are, you can do that a little bit better. Uh, and honestly, your professors and your peers are going to respect you more if you really push yourself and definitely your employers when you get out because you're going to have these things that, you know, maybe you thought when you got them started uh, were too big for you to do, but then you did them. And now look at you go. Uh, you now realize a little bit further where your limits are and that's really cool. So that's the second thing I wanna talk about. The third thing I wanna talk about is that you should probably get a job while you're doing your masters. Now the reason for this is because the job market in librarianship is pretty oversaturated. And so if you want to set yourself apart from your peers, Now's the time to start building on that. Uh, now's the time to start looking for opportunities to put into practice what you're learning in class. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to work in a library, although that would be super beneficial. But keep in mind that a master's in library and information science is a master's in library and information science. You're studying how humans and information interact with each other and affect each other in really interesting ways. And you can do a lot more with that um, than just being a library assistant. But if that's what you want to do, also do that. So for example, when I was doing my master's, the first job that I got, uh, my work learn, was I worked as a research analyst for my school's alumni office. Um, and I learned how to find information in the public realm about people and some information not so much in the public realm. But it was super interesting because it helped me understand how a university works, uh, how the public sector slash private sector uses information to um, pursue their, their mission, and it also introduced me to a lot of folks who also had MLISs and who were in influential positions. And from a career point of view, that's super useful. Uh, that is a form of networking that you should be doing. Now, working and doing school full-time can be very difficult, as I quickly found out, and so this is where I would say that if you have the opportunity, uh, or if it's within your means, try and stretch out your degree a little bit. Um, in my program, everyone in the first term takes the same four classes. Uh, and then if you wanna do full time, you have to take four classes each term after that. But you don't actually. And so what I did was instead of taking four classes per term, I did two classes per term and I took courses over the summer. Uh, and I ended up finishing like one semester or two semesters later than folks who had done full, full time but that gave me so much more free time to pursue my own interests, uh, to do that work learn, to work as a tech in the core instructor for my school, to take on some research gigs at the library, at my university library, 
to do this YouTube channel. And honestly, I think that having that free time to pursue things that were interesting to me, but also interesting professionally, made a world of difference in terms of getting hired. Uh, when I graduated in December of 2018, I had a job in March of 2019. And while that was three months of unemployment, uh, not great, the job that I got paid quite well, um, and it's because I had a lot of stuff under my belt, and I was only able to have that other stuff under my belt because I I knew what my limits were and I respected them. I knew that trying to burn myself out by finishing fast wasn't going to work for me. Now, I say that, but it's also important to keep in mind that I had some folks in my course who did um, finish. They went, they powered through. They are beasts, and I have tons of respect for them. But for me, that wasn't what I wanted to do. And as someone who didn't already have experience working in a library, um, really having, really pacing myself and getting some work experience before going into the job market really helped a lot. So um, if you can afford it, consider that. Uh, and if you're like, oh, but how do I justify that? Well, think of it this way. If you graduate and you can't find a job because you don't have experience and it takes you like a year to find a job, that's gonna cost you as much money perhaps as an extra term of student loans. So cost benefit, up to you to figure it out, but I'm just putting it out there. Now, one of the things that I did because I was only taking courses half time was I worked as a wellness peer at my school. What that meant is that I volunteered a few hours a week to work in my school's wellness center and I was able to interact with students who were much younger than me because I'm 32 and most university students are not. Um, but that gave me a good grasp of what uh, kids these days are doing and what their big concerns are and see how I can help them, which you know, now that I'm a public librarian, I think is super important to have a grasp of. Uh, kids these days have it hard. And having that experience, doing that volunteer work, let me understand that a little bit better. Besides that, I was also part of student government, which was great because now I can say that I've sat on the board of directors for a uh, nonprofit, a registered nonprofit, and I understand how governance works. And so if I ever find myself working for a nonprofit, which a public library is, I have a better grasp of how things work than most people. And of course, uh, from a professional point of view, this is a good opportunity to get involved with like professional organizations, uh, whether that's the ALA, SLA, whatever other acronym -y professional organization you can think of. They are always looking for student participation and it's a good way to network and meet others and you know find out who's doing what where and why and when. Yeah, okay, I think that covers it. And all of this, again, is because I gave myself that time uh, to breathe, and I respected my time, and I knew my limits. So, um, although I did push them, which goes back to that first point, push your limits. Now, the final thing I want to encourage you to do is sleep. Uh, I know that maybe there will be times where the temptation is, oh, I'm just going to stay up all night, I'm going to pull an all-nighter, and then uh, I'm going to get this thing done. Do that as least often as you can. When you don't sleep, what happens is anything that you learn during the day doesn't necessarily get put into long-term memory as well as it should. Uh, you obviously become more tired throughout the day. You become cranky. The stuff that you would normally be learning during the day, you might not necessarily catch. You then have to buy more money or you have to buy more coffee and drink more coffee and you gain weight and you get stressed and everyone doesn't like being around you because you're cranky. So just try and sleep, okay? I know that's kind of a dad thing to say, but just take care of your sleep. It's sacred. Um, yeah, but yeah. So that's all I've got. Hopefully some of that is helpful for you. Uh, if you have already done library school, let me know in the comments below what work, worked out for you. And if you are just starting library school, let me know in the comments below whether or not this is helpful for you or what questions you have. Uh, that's it. Until next time, thank you for watching and don't forget to ask questions. Okay, bye.